Good evening, everyone. For those who don't know me, I'm Brian. Some of you who do know me might have struggled to recognize me in the disguise that I've adopted today. What you probably don't know is that I am chair of the finance group of the PCC. That's a role that I sadly inherited following the death of Peter Ford earlier this year. And it's the reason why I've been asked to speak to you this evening. I don't think we have any visitors in the congregation this evening, but if, if we do, I apologize to you. What I'm going to say is largely about the church's own housekeeping, although I hope it will also include some points of more general relevance and interest. The first thing that I need to do is to thank you on behalf of the vicar, the church wardens, the finance group, and the rest of the PCC as your trustees to thank you for all that each one of you gives to Christ Church with St. Mary's, of your money, your time, and your talents in so many ways, and without which Christ Church with St. Mary's would not be able to exist or function. So thank you. Thank you very much indeed for all that you do in so many different ways. In an ideal world, I'd be able to stop there, but we don't live in an ideal world, and there are some other things that I have to say to you on behalf of the PCCC. At this point, I think some of us might start to shift uncomfortably in our seats and wish that this would be over as soon as possible. Do please bear with me. Bear with me because what I have to say is important and it's complicated. I will try to do my best to make it as clear and engaging as possible. And please spare a thought for Margaret and Mike, and most of the choir who've already heard this, and especially for Daniel, who had three helpings before lunch. Uh, and also, you should be aware that I don't normally get up at six o'clock on a Sunday. I did this for the first time shortly after eight this morning, and I might no longer be at my bed. To try and make this engaging, I'm going to make some comparisons with a glass of beer. I'm also going to frame what I have to say in terms of five other words beginning with C. Circumstances, challenge, context, commitment, and choices. I aim to explain the financial circumstances of Christchurch with St. Mary's, to highlight the budgetary challenge that those circumstances pose for the PCC, to describe very briefly, and that takes me into territory for which I'm unqualified, the biblical context of our giving, and to invite each of us, of us to consider prayerfully what commitment and choices we might make personally in responding to what I have to say. So my first C is financial circumstances. And if we were to think about Christchurch as a glass of beer, you might be forgiven for thinking that our glass is full to the brim or overflowing. Why do I say that? I say that because of the excellent facilities that we have here and in the community centre. And over the past 12 years, we have spent a total of almost 1.5 million pounds on three big capital projects. In 2005, we carried out repairs to the stonework of the spire and replacement of the slate louvres. In 2013, we built the community centre. And this year, we carried out the internal reordering. But we need to consider where that money came from. Firstly, the spire. The repairs cost £370,000. Uh, uh, over, over half of that came from the skyline of Peel, much of which was made up of legacies. The balance came from PCC reserves. The community centre cost three quarters of a million pounds. A third of that, approximately, came from a grant from Swindon Borough Council, and other parts of it were funded by other grants, and the remainder from PCC reserves largely the result of the sale of the former church hall in Devizes Road, which itself was paid for by the SPCK in 1913. And finally, the reordering, the new floor, the screen and projector, which I'm using now, the new lighting and heating systems, and the chairs, which none of you are actually sitting on. <laughs> Total cost of £340,000. £240,000 came from a single legacy from Pamela Gilbert, the daughter of a previous incumbent of Christchurch. Other parts of it were paid for from other legacies. So I think there are two points to be made here. 
Oh, and by the way, we still have a money, enough money left over to do the roof, which is the next major project which we will be embarking on before too long. There are two reasons why we've been able to complete all of those projects. First, because we've had the time and talents of Stephen Grosvenor, Mike Palmer, and Daniel Pitt, whose skills and availability have enabled us to manage those projects on our behalf. And their project management has actually saved us a lot of money, which would otherwise have had to be paid to full-time project managers. But on, in, in financial terms, we have been remarkably blessed with windfalls from grants, legacies, and property sales. Not just the church hall, but also the former parish office in Cricklade Street and the, and the former curate's ho house in Upham Road. So essentially, all of this money we've spent is, is other people's money, and much of it has depended on the generosity of previous generations. But that doesn't really show the full picture, and our regular income and expenditure tells a different story. Firstly, our income. We have two main categories of income. A giving from members of the congregation, particularly planned giving, and income from other sources um, from the wider community. F rentals on properties, statutory fees, fundraising activities, and payments for the use of the church car park. If we look at giving, giving has gradually declined. Uh, if anyone is looking at the numbers, please be aware that those, the figures for 2014 are distorted by a one-off donation of 10,000 pounds during that year, but otherwise there has been a gradual decline in giving. Income from other sources has also declined, and in particular I need to draw your attention to the difference between £88,000 in 2015 and £70,000 in 2016. That is largely accounted for by the loss of rental income from the former Hickman shop in Victoria Road. That property is owned two-thirds by Christchurch with St. Mary's and one-third by St. Mark's. Since the closure of Hickman's, we have been unable to obtain a replacement commercial and that situation is likely put to pertain for the foreseeable future. And in previous years, rental from those premises has typically accounted for about 7% of our annual income. So that is leaving a significant hole in our budget. And in terms of our planned giving, not only is it declining, it's also precarious. Now I have to preface what I say by an appreciation that clearly the financial circumstances of individual members of the church vary widely, and some are better able to give than others. But this pie chart shows that 41% of our planned giving in 2016 came from just 12 giving individuals or households. The remaining 60% from 153 givers. So essentially, 10% of givers account for half of our income. So we rely disproportionately on a small number of givers. That also carries with it a very significant element of financial risk in that if we were to lose, for whatever reason, three or four of those principal givers, that would create a further hole in our finances. We also need to consider our expenditure. Aside from mission giving to organizations beyond the diocese, which is modest and declining, we have two main categories of expenditure. Firstly, church running costs, including utilities, repairs, consumables, and employment of staff. Inevitably, those costs increase in line with inflation. The other major category of our expenditure, which accounts for almost two-thirds of our budget, is the parish share payment to the Diocese of Bristol. That also has increased over the years. In 2017, the Diocese suggested that it would be appropriate for Christ Church to pay £127,500. The PCC has agreed to pay that sum, but the only way in which we're able to do so, or at least we expect to be able to do so, is by setting a deficit budget. 
and making up the difference by drawing on our reserves. For 2018, the diocese has suggested that we pay an even higher figure of £132,000. And that clearly presents the PCC with a very considerable budgetary challenge. If I return to my beer glass, I think we've, we are actually in a situation where our glass is not overflowing, but we are emptying it faster than it's being refilled. Not only that, we're relying unduly on a small number of people to pay for the next round of drinks. At this point, at the risk of blasphemy, and I'm bracing myself for an unscheduled visit by the Spanish Inquisition, I'm going to invoke the help of Monty Python, not in pursuit of a quest for the Holy Grail, but by reference to the life of Brian. How many of you are familiar with the film The Life of Brian? Memorable lines in The Life of Brian, one of which, of course, is always look on the bright side. And that might be an appropriate slogan for a stewardship campaign. What are some of the other memorable lines in The Life of Brian? Indeed, the assertion by the mother of the eponymous Brian that he's a very, very naughty boy. And I will leave you to decide for yourselves whether or not that is the case. There's also, of course, blessed are the cheesemakers, as they are, undoubtedly are. And apart from uh, Ca uh, Carol, who can't eat milk, <laughs> we have a lot to thank them for. But one of the, the most memorable lines is the one, the, the question, what have the Romans ever done for us? At the end of an extended period of dialogue, that question was re reformulated as, all right, but apart from the sanitation, the medicine, education, wine, public order, irrigation, roads, a fresh water system, and public health, what have the Romans ever done for us? And we might want to ask a similar question about parish share, which some of you might perceive as a tax imposed on us by the diocese from which we gain no benefit. I think there are two questions which we need to ask ourselves about parish share. Firstly, what is it and what does it do for us? The parish share is the main way that ministry is funded across the diocese. It pays for clergy stipends and their pastoral support and their housing, including Simon's stipend and the Christchurch vicarage. It pays for training of lay and ordained ministers and for people who work with children and young people. It also pays for the diocese's contribution to education in 70 schools across the Diocese of Bristol including the new deanery secondary school at Whittlestow, which is currently being constructed next to the Waitrose supermarket. So parish share does a great deal, not just for us, but for others. And what it does for others is equally important to what it does for us, if not more so. Some of you may remember a few years ago at a 10 o'clock service, we were visited by three ladies from Parks and Walcott. Parks and Walcott is a net beneficiary of parish share. It's not a wealthy area and they receive more than they pay in. Those three ladies came to tell us how much they appreciated the support of us and other parishes in what they receive from parish share and importantly in what it enables them to do. And they spoke very movingly indeed. The second question is a more complex one. How much parish share should Christchurch pay? And in my view, as a large and relative to others well-endowed parish, we should give generously, graciously, and equitably. By equitably, I mean at a level that is fair to us, but is also fair to others and to the diocese as a whole. However, I think that needs to be based on a number of principles. The first principle is it should be appropriate. And I think that means that as a wealthy parish, we should pay proportionately more than others, and we should pay, pay in more than we receive back in terms of the costs of Simon and his vicarage. However, what we pay must be affordable, and it needs to be affordable as part of a balanced annual budget. It also needs to be sustainable. 
by that I mean affordable over the next few years, not just for one year. However, the diocese suggests that we pay a level of parish share in 2018 that we are unlikely to be able to reach in our current circumstances. Clearly, that presents a dilemma and a very considerable budgetary challenge for the PCC. My next C is the biblical context. Now, you might think all of this talk about money is not very bi biblical. But if the internet is to be believed, the Bible contains 2,350 verses about money and possessions. Now, in a sense, that's neither here nor there. What's more, more important for our present purpose is the Bible says a lot about giving. In particular, St. Paul says a lot about giving, a great deal about giving, in chapters 8 and 9 of his second letter to the Corinthians. St. Paul says that gi our giving as Christians should be sac we should give sacrificially, generously, gratefully, fully, compassionately, carefully, actually, freely, confidently, and purposefully. However, that brings me to the fourth and fifth C's, commitment and choices. As I've demonstrated, I hope, the financial circumstances of Christchurch with St. Mary's are asset rich, but our regular income is declining and it's precarious. That poses a very considerable budgetary challenge for the PCC of balancing income and expenditure while reconciling our own needs with our responsibility to the diocese as a whole. We need to view that challenge in the biblical context for our giving. That is, that giving is born of grace and is our response and should be our response for each of us to God's own gift of grace to us in Jesus. That then raises the question of our individual commitment to Christ and how each one of us might respond personally to the situation that I've described. Stewardship is choices. Choices for the PCC and choices for each one of us individually about how we use our resources. And I invite you to reflect prayerfully during the remainder of the service and over the next few weeks on what your response might be, what you might be able to do to help, to help Christchurch address the situation that faces it. Before I finish, I need to say something about legacies. Some of you might be aware that very recently we have received some substantial legacies, very generous legacies, from Peter Ford and Pam Glue. We are very grateful for those, those legacies, but from that, I think some important points arise. Firstly, if we return to my glass of beer, I think what we actually have is a glass of beer with a big frothy head on it. And if you have a glass of beer with a head on it, when you leave it to stand, the foam collapses. You're left with a glass that is half empty. In a sense, legacies are like the foam on the beer. We can't always assume that we'll, there will be new legacies coming along to bail us out. And it would be much better to be confident and we would be able to do so much more if we were able to be certain that our glass would always be three quarters full from our own resources. The other thing that follows from those legacies is that, as I've described, we as the present generation have benefited substantially from the generosity of earlier generations in the things that we've been able to do for our buildings. I think, I think the PCC has a responsibility to use those new legacies wisely in ways that have longer term benefits for future generations. That might be through further enhancement of our facilities, or it might perhaps be through the employment of a specialist worker to extend and develop our ministry to young people and families with children. What those legacies don't do is absolve us of responsibility to pay our own way for our everyday running costs. And I think it would be irresponsible for the PCC to use those legacies to subsidize our housekeeping costs. Finally, I'd like to read to you just a few verses from chapter 9 of Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. 
Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. Thanks be to God for his indescribable. And to conclude, may I please invite you to join with me in saying the prayer on the screen. Loving, Loving Father, Father, you have made, made us, us your, your people, people richly, richly provided, provided us with good, good gifts, gifts, and called us to live for you. you. May, may gratitude be in our hearts. hearts. May, may generosity be in our hands. hands. May, may justice and righteousness guide our feet. feet. And, and may, may the life of your kingdom and the joy of heaven be found, be found among, among us. us. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. I think most of you know me. I'm uh, Daniel Pitt, one of your church wardens. I'm privileged to be on the finance and governance group uh, with Simon, our vicar, Keith Tredgett, our treasurer, and Brian Harris, our chair. Just a couple of practicalities. The budget process will be a draft budget put together by the Finance and Governance Group this month. That will then be subject to review and agreement by the PCC, the PCC budget meeting at the end of October. And that will also include our contribution towards the parish share. The stewardship packs contain four items. The first is Simon's letter to us all. And the second item, Bishop Mike's farewell letter. A summary of this presentation and a bank standing order form. We are all encouraged to, use, to give by standing orders. Um, but in addition, Simon is asking that we, when we review our intent for giving, we let Stephen Grosvenor, our gift aid secretary, know what our intent is to help with the budget. And of course, that is strictly in confidence. The information in the packs is all on our website, and if people would like paper copies, that can be given from the parish office. So there is an envelope, a stewardship pack, addressed to everybody on the electoral roll. And if you haven't already collected your envelope, please collect your envelope with your address. And they're all at the back of the church on, uh, on the table. I think nearly everybody's had them, but if there are one or two still to go, that, that would be good. Finally, coming soon, the diocese is about to launch a parish giving scheme. And this is simply a scheme to facilitate the administration of our giving. And when the details have been finalised, we'll be approaching everybody and asking for them to support this scheme. It's an administrative scheme. It simply makes the arrangements for gift aid collection simpler. Thank you very much.